Hello, my name is uh, Peter Paterka from Six Sigma US, and I'd like to talk about one of the biggest barriers that I think we have for process improvement. And I think the barrier is exactly right between our ears. It's in our thinking, it's in our brains. And so I'd like to talk about a theory that's commonly viewed out there, and I'd like to ask a few questions about this theory. And so the theory kind of works like that. So we've got one line here. Got a little straighter on that one. And this is really cost over here. So this is the cost uh, that we do to uh, having problems, the cost due to uh, eliminating defects. Some people call this the cost of what it just cost to, for quality. If you want something like the customer wants it, customer wants to receive it a certain way, that's the axis that we have across there. And so uh, this, this is uh, the axis of the goodness. And this would be the goodness of what the customer would like to have. This is goodness. And so if we look off to the right-hand side over here, this would be 100%, 100% goodness. And so the way the theory works is, is if you're the service provider or you're the manufacturing person, as we get better and better and better to the world of perfection, you know, the cost is just going to go up and up and up. So this is for the service provider or the manufacturer. So as things get better and better and better, once we get 100% of goodness, exactly like the customer wants it, then our costs are going to go very, very high. So there's another um, curve, and this is going to be really the curve that relates to the cost for the actual buyer of the product or service. And so the way it works is you start very low over here, very high cost. If you have a lot of defects, there's going to be a problem. And as it gets better and better and better, and eventually there's going to be no cost associated with the customer. So this is the customer curve here. So as things get better and better and better, uh, the cost for the customer due to any problems uh, is going to be zero. And so the way the theory works is there's an optimal level of goodness or quality, if you will, that's going to actually minimize the overall cost. So this is going to get us a smiley face right here. And so this is what we're driving for. Now, the question that I have for you is, is this theory true or false? Just simply, is this theory true or is it false? And so why don't you take a moment to think about that? Now, I've been doing this example with in red the for the supplier, the service provider, the manufacturer, and we've got in a purple color there, we've got the cost due to problems and so forth due to customers. And in the green, we have the, the optimal level of quality. And I've been doing this example for probably about 20 years right now. And overwhelmingly, when I do this, it just continually amazes me is I get people to write down it's true. This is a true theory. I believe in this theory. In fact, I would say overall over the years, it's probably 70% true. I did a master black belt program uh, not that long ago, and I had six attendees, and every single attendee wrote down this is true. And let's think about this. If this is true, then why in the world would we have process improvement? You know, why would we have teams? Why would we have Six Sigma green belts and black belts? It wouldn't really make any sense because everybody knows that our company is already running at the optimal quality level. 
I mean, it must be. That's why we hired all these great people. And so my contention is, my belief is, this particular theory is all over the web, and it's every place you can find it. And my belief is this theory is couldn't be more false. This theory is based upon inspection. If we're relying on inspection, if we're relying on people to look at products and services to inspect and inspect and inspect, to make it perfect, this will cost very, very high. I um, had a gentleman uh, that I work with by the name of Hero Hankelboard. I uh, learned quite a bit of him. He's a student of Dr. Deming. And he said he went to a conference in Europe in the 1970s. And he saw this graph presented by the uh, um, by Dr. Duran from the Duran Institute. And um, he's certainly well known. And he showed this curve. And... Hero Hackaboard saw this curve and he says, that's great. That's great. The Japanese are measuring in parts per million right now. All they have to do is get the parts per billion and then to zillion. And then they're going to go out of business. We have no need for making improvements. Now, one of the examples that uh, Hero Hackaboard would tell in some of the seminars that I attended, and again, he was a longtime student at Dr. Deming, is he said there was a large European uh, car manufacturer that was a very proud uh, manufacturer. They're well known. And what they had in their factory was they had a conveyor system that was in the factory and that had all of their doors uh, were hooked up to the conveyor system. And when a new car came down the production line, the chassis of a new car, they would make the measurements and then the system would go out and actually find, the computer would go out and find a perfectly fit door, a customized fit. And they were so proud of that fact because of the fact that that made it perfect. If we think about this curve, you know, that's, For processes that are like that, that's what this curve is built for. We literally have to do inspection. We have to measure it, go out and find that car door that's going to fit perfectly. And so I would argue that this is really a broken paradigm that we have, a broken mindset that we have that really is going to rely on when we actually uh, rely on inspection to make improvement. And so take a look. Type cost of quality on the internet and you'll see many, many different curves out there. And uh, it's very, very popular that these curves exist. So thanks for the minute. Here's one that I picked up on, uh, on the line here. And again, where you want to be. Uh, no, I don't want to be there. I want to be low cost. I want to be high quality. I want to be way off on the right hand side. I want the best quality. And guess what? I also want the lowest cost. And I think most people, that are really experts in the field uh, understand that the lowest cost producers are often, you know, the highest quality producers. So thanks very much for listening. I hope you have a good day, but try this with your teams, see what they're thinking. And if you're getting a lot of trues, then I think you need to have some discussion because that's going to be a, you know, people are going to stop making improvements, not want to have teams when, when we believe that there's this optimal level of quality uh, that we have.